mean, what are, what are some of those elements that you would uh, seek to suggest as possible ways of helping us to navigate? Okay. This? Well, as we were getting ready, let me just go back to my experience uh, as a missionary in, in Japan and in Asia, and then my work with the Lausanne movement. It became obvious to me that, that churches and countries have distinct personalities, have distinct histories, but they also have gifts. And as, when I would be meeting with leaders of various churches or various countries, I would ask them, what gift do you have to share? Cape Town, the Global Congress on World Evangelization, in one sense, it's going to be an international gift exchange. What gift do you have? Uh, I could tell you some of the stories of, 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 of things that sh people shared upon reflection. But I think the American church, by virtue of geography, people have come from everywhere. Um, by virtue of our history, uh, there was a big idea uh, that, that helped to create the country, uh, the idea of freedom, the idea of the dignity of the individual, and then this huge continent uh, to explore. And obviously some terrible things happened along the way, especially with the genocide of the, of the, the Native American population. But there's a, a grandeur to the imagination of, of this country, and there's also a generosity of spirit. Now the gospel informs that. And when we look at the world today, I think that though there is a lot of fear and anger, we should re be reminded of the words of the Apostle Paul to Timothy. He's not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and of power and a sound mind. So let's love God, let's love our neighbors, let's love the world. Uh, let's, let's use the power that we have by virtue of the Holy Spirit being within us, and let's use our minds. Uh, let's, let's pray and ask God that he would help us to, to find the way through our, our, our current morass. This is, this is the whole vision of civilitas, where we find incivility and fragmentation. Let's work for civility. Shaw said, some people look at things the way they are and ask why. Others look at things the way they could be and ask why not. I, I, I resonate with everything that you're saying. Although I often wonder if in uh, God's uh, mysterious ways of proceeding, uh, and this is just probably more of a theoretical uh, rumination than anything else, mm -hmm. um, but uh, I see that even in the narrative of the book of Acts, mm -hmm. where it begins with those uh, nations coming together and hearing the gospel in their own tongues mm -hmm. and this promise of uh, universal yeah. uh, gospel that uh, would reach everyone. And yet, as soon as that moment is uh, passed, then uh, conflict enters. Mm -hmm. It enters between the church and the uh, dominant authorities. It also takes place within the church itself. We see, for mm -hmm. example, in the book of Acts, those conflicts between the uh, widows of the uh, of the Greeks mm -hmm. and, and the Jews. Right. Uh, conflict in the church as to whether Gentiles would be admitted into mm -hmm. uh, the church or not and whether they had to first become Jews mm -hmm. and adopt the ways of Judaism before you know, becoming Christian. And the conflict between the Apostle Paul and the Apostle mm -hmm. Peter and on and on and on. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and God working within, within that um, mm -hmm. darkness as well. Right. And of course, I mean, the greatest division, the division between the, the Jewish uh, origins of the church mm -hmm. and becoming a Gentile church mm -hmm. and then all the persecution of the Jews and then the church really abandoning its Jewish origins and sort of going its own way. Right. I think a rift that I'm not sure was in God's perfect will mm -hmm. either. And I think mm -hmm. that God may want to reconcile those elements. I'm, my point being, uh, Doug, that um, I often wonder if God does not work through and maybe even perhaps require a certain level of conflict. I think mm -hmm. I, I, I've often said that God is more Darwinian than we would like him to think, mm -hmm. like to think that he is. Yeah. That he can often work, and that sometimes you know in human uh, processes, uh, anger is required, mm -hmm. perhaps. Sure. Maybe even conflict to a certain mm -hmm. degree, and that 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 anger, that conflict serves to kind of uh, balance the the the. the, the dialogue. Right. And mm -hmm. that perhaps, for example, when I see the, the anger right now in mm -hmm. America. When I see what somebody like Donald Trump, and I think mm -hmm. he's the elephant always sure. looming in our course, conversations yeah. these mm -hmm. days, and needs to be brought in. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he's, we shouldn't avoid the, the name. Um, I, I find, for example, that uh, uh, what Trump represents, the phenomenon that he, he represents, is, cannot be totally dismissed as kind of an aberration, as some mm -hmm. sort of expression of the dark unconscious of America. But I, I have found him illuminating because I think he, he, he and the reaction of a whole sector of America has forced us, mm -hmm. I think, to the better of mm -hmm. America mm -hmm. to deal 
with certain issues that otherwise we may not have dealt with. Right. The, the cult of uh, political correctness. Mm -hmm. Um, the, you know, just the, the, the overweening, I think, of, of our uh, student uh, bodies in, mm -hmm. in, in America, mm -hmm. uh, the dominance of certain sectors mm -hmm. that are kind of uh, taking over in certain aspects of uh, American life. And so, uh, you know, I, I think all, a lot of things that are, I think were wrong with America, uh, which was pursuing, I think, some good things, you know, the inclusion of other groups uh, and, uh, you know, reacting, let's say, to you know, the whole issue of homosexuality and gay mm -hmm. marriage. How, do, how should we as Christians react to that? Sure. But which mm -hmm. I think maybe we perhaps went overboard a mm -hmm. bit. I don't know. Uh, I, I tend to see yeah. that in our desire mm -hmm. to, for generosity, mm -hmm. we have also given way to a certain mm -hmm. a different kind of exploitation. Mm -hmm. And that this anger, yeah. this uh, seeming overreaction, in a way is kind of uh, the, the swinging of the pendulum in another direction, which hopefully will yield mm -hmm some sort of balance in between, which will force us to re, sure. you know, re-establish uh, a dialogue in a different sure. way, perhaps yeah. more and honest, more realistic. Not to become realistic. too academic, but it's the Hegelian dialectic, isn't it? Mm -hmm. There's the, the thesis, the antithesis, mm -hmm. the synthesis. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. what's the new yeah. way forward? Yeah. And you're, you're right. I think the anger and the tension can force us to look at issues more deeply. And tension can be destructive or constructive. And so uh, hopefully, and I think this is your aspiration, certainly mine, I think we, we share this, that we may share a different perspective on some things, is, is how can this help us to, to rediscover what it means uh, to be a nation, what it means to be a church in the 21st century. And so in this case, I mean, you, you could say that America, the greatness of this country, was created by Hitler. Mm. How? I mean, it summoned us. Yeah. Uh, to determine what was most valuable. And we joined together uh, with the, the French and, and the British and, and others uh, to liberate uh, Europe from fascism, Nazism, actually. Now, there were things that made this country great in the 20th century. I mean, the industries, the industries that were developed because of the war became uh, tools for uh, progress, mm -hmm. economic... The liberation of women in the Oh, workforce, so, yeah, so, 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 so many war, things. Yeah. And God does not need America. God can get his work done with or without our country. God does need the church. And so the greatest summons is to the church uh, to be people who love their enemies, who love their neighbors. And there again, that's a part of civilitas, that where there are people in a town, on a street, in a community who have profound differences, either you can isolate yourself from one another, or you can wish that they didn't exist and they would move away, or you can say, how do we forge a community in this context? And this is where I think the church in this country has a great opportunity because globalization and multi-everything, multi-culture, multi-ethnic, multi-religion, this is pretty new. There's really not a roadmap for it. And so I think the whole world is looking for how do we, how do, how do we get along?